Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Gritta. Um, let me find her question here. So she says, Dear Amy, I suffer from the big fear of being alone. Imagining that I would have to live or stay alone fills me with dread and fear and sometimes even panic. I've tried many things to address this, but as you might imagine, nothing has helped so far. When I'm alone, I have the feeling that my life has no sense, no aim, and that I'm only killing time. Everything bores me. Do you have some idea of what could help me? I do. So this might sound kind of crazy. Um, I feel like I've probably said that before. <laughs> this might sound crazy, but hear me out. Um, I get it, Greta, like this, this fear comes up and for all of us, any, anything that we're afraid of or any kind of fear that we have like that, it, it feels like it's about something. So you have this fear of being alone and you say even thinking about, so not when you actually, I'm sure you maybe feel fear when you are alone, but you said in there even thinking about, you know, that I might have to live alone or whatever fills me with this feeling. So the being alone, living alone, like that piece of it, that starts to get really big in our experience. That for us, the, the normal human beings, we feel something that doesn't feel good. We feel fear. And instantly we get very focused on the what it's about piece of that. The I'm afraid of being alone. I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of feeling. I'm afraid of losing something, whatever it is we get really afraid of, right? We go straight, just in our little experience, in our mind, we go straight to the about piece of it, you know, what it looks and feels like it's about. And then because that's just what's huge in our experience, that's what grows and gets huge. And so the fear piece, I mean, obviously the fear piece, we're feeling that and that's big and that's around as well, but it's almost like our mind kind of reorients a bit on this what it's about thing and I think I'm just making this up this is just my kind of hunch about it but I think the reason that happens I mean I think it's just us trying to help ourselves like if we can see oh my fear is about being alone in our minds in our little minds we're in there kind of like okay well then if I cannot be alone I'll be okay or if I can fix being alone or if I can prevent being alone or again whatever it is for any of us we're in there kind of kind of focused on the about piece, I think in part because we're just trying to feel better. You know, we just want to have the best shot of getting out of this and feeling like ourselves again that we can. And so we sort of reason in some unconscious way that if we can figure out what it's about, then maybe we can change it. Maybe we can fix it. But what I want to propose to you, Greta, is, is that you try taking the about being alone section out of this. And again, for anyone listening, if you have some big fear, take the about, like set that aside for now. We don't need to do anything with it. Just set the, that set that piece aside for now. And, and let's look not at what it's about or what we think is creating our experience, which in your case is being alone. Look at just what it is, which is fear, which is a feeling. It's, it's stuff we feel within us. It's sensation that we feel in our body. I don't know what happens. Maybe you get sweaty or your heart starts pounding or you feel like you're going to throw up or whatever the feelings are. That's, the, that's kind of the primary, right? We feel this. We feel fear. So we feel that physically and our mind starts talking about stuff. Now I'm saying it in this way to help you get a bigger picture of of kind of the order of events. And even that is not a great way of saying it because it's not like there's step one, step two, you know, that this is how human beings feel stuff. But but there's something about this this feeling coming up and you feel it physically and then there is a kind of, and then your mind starts going. Maybe your mind starts going first and you, you're thinking about being alone someday or you are alone and your mind goes out there. But pretty quickly, the feeling, the sensations come up and your mind's going at the same time. So taking, again, the circumstance out of it for a minute, let's just look at that right there. 
What fear is, is stuff happening in your body, just stuff, not painful stuff, not, not dangerous stuff, not horrible stuff, just stuff happening in your body and your mind going off telling stories, your mind thinking a lot of stuff. Meanwhile, what we know in pretty much every case of fear is that we're actually okay. There's actually, you know, we're actually just sitting at home. Maybe there happen to be no people with heartbeats around you in the immediate vicinity, but that doesn't mean anything. That's just a fact, you know, it doesn't, can't create anything. It doesn't mean anything. So meanwhile, we're totally safe. We're totally okay. But here we are sitting at home with this stuff rushing through our body and our mind off telling stories. And that combination, like that experience is such a huge, amazing, compelling, brought to life thing that we've just frankly been been taught to kind of misunderstand. We haven't been taught to misunderstand it, but we've been in a misunderstanding about it from everyone around us, where everyone around us too is focused on, well, what, what makes you afraid? What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of that? Focusing, like just pointing us in the wrong direction. So of course we're all about the about, you know, we're all about the, oh, I don't like being alone or I don't like snakes or whatever, but it's not that. It's sensation and a mind racing. That's it. Meanwhile, we're fine. We're totally safe. We're just feeling stuff in our body and a mind talking about it. And I think like starting to look there just starts to wake us up a little bit. Even if this just wakes you up a tiny bit, Greta, it's, that's amazing. Like just starts to wake us up a little bit from this huge illusion that we're in. We're caught up in this thing that feels so real and so scary. And it literally is the safest thing in the world. It's like someone put virtual reality. We were just at a birthday party this weekend at um, like a laser tag place and they had virtual reality. And it was the funniest thing because you could see like, and I think they just left the door open on accident, but um, you could see some like teenage kids in there doing the virtual reality. And me and my husband were just watching them. We're like, they look ridiculous because they're just shooting at stuff and jumping and jumping out of the way. And we're like, oh my gosh, you're just people with glasses on. Like they look crazy. In their little reality, in their little world, it was pretty darn real and they needed to jump and they, you know, I mean, they were in it, but to us, it looked nuts. And you know, that's our life. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much human life all the time, all the time. We're feeling stuff within us. Our mind is off narrating and it is virtual reality. It is our reality, but it isn't the reality. So, Again, I want to go back to this piece about what we're afraid of, the of part, so misleading. And it's, you know, it's just a, it's just a, an artifact of where psychology and, and, I don't know, people that know stuff about self-help and how humans work and all of that, just, just kind of where they've been. And it's just, you know, we're moving, we're evolving. Let me say it that way. That's where the old paradigm pointed us is let's look at what you're afraid of. Let's help you change your thoughts about what you're afraid of. And let's help you see that it's actually safe. And while I want all of those things for you, we're not gonna keep staring at the of as if being alone is some actual real problem for you, Greta, because it isn't, it isn't. It's that stuff happens in your body in an instant, your mind starts talking about it, saying, I don't like this. Some of the stuff you said, I can't remember, my, my, my life is empty, I'm wasting time, I don't like being alone, this is a horrible feeling, I have to get out of this. That's thought, that's the habitual thought that comes up along with those sensations. That is not something you need to solve for. It is not something that is telling you anything real necessarily. It's not something that we need to get in and analyze or fix. It's not even... This is nuts, but it's not even how you feel necessarily. It's like our mind, like my mind used to come up all the time and tell me with the most certainty you could possibly imagine that I wanted to go eat a whole gallon of ice cream. I didn't want that, but my brain thought I did. So it brought it to life in a really great way, a really compelling way. And that's what's happening for you. And that's what happens when we get caught up in these fears of things and phobias and things like that. Like, it, it's just a really, really good game of virtual reality. So where I want to, again, point everyone here in this right now, because there's a lot we could say in this, is to see if we can chop off the end of that sentence. I'm afraid of dot, 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 whatever we think we're afraid of. Let's just get rid of after the dot, 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 because 
it's so helpful to just stay pointed in, I'm feeling fear. The fact that your mind starts talking about being alone every time you feel that feeling, that's just what your mind happens to do right now. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean you're in danger. Doesn't mean you even hate being alone. It's just the habit of your mind. But if we can start to see that in a different way and kind of let that happen but not respect it so much, not think we need to solve for that, this whole thing starts to look different. Then before you know it, oh, I'm just feeling something. I'm feeling fear. And then what I hear people say, what we sort of evolve to is, I'm just not feeling like myself, or I'm not feeling well, or I'm just feeling stuff, or I'm feeling thought, or I'm feeling life. Like, but, but you can see how that's a huge leap from I'm scared to death to be alone, you know, which leads you straight outside to all kinds of external fixes and things that are outside of your control and all kinds of work and all kinds of life changes that, frankly, are not going to help your fear of being alone very well. It points you away from all that outside stuff and it keeps it right here and it keeps us more clearly seeing what's happening. All we're experiencing is thought brought to life and then a mind, like sensation in our body and then a mind bringing all this thought, all this thought narrating it, which between you and me is kind of full of crap. It's not something you want to listen to, those explanations and those abouts and all those worries. So see if you can break it apart a little bit that way, Greta and everyone and I, I really hope that's helpful in kind of breaking through this big illusion that just looks and feels so real. It's got to be about the about, right? It's like, like that's the whole story. There has to be a storyline to it for us to get so caught up in it. Well, as soon as we start to see through that storyline, the illusion starts to crumble because, yeah, it's not, it's not much without a compelling story behind it. So thanks, guys, for listening. Um, thank you, everyone, for sending your questions. And um, be back here next week. Have a great week.